course, ever since the Russian invasion of Ukraine, markets all over the world have been on the brink of collapse, and in many cases they have actually been actively crashing. The sanctions that have been put into place against Russia by the West have dragged our economies through the mud, and the risks are that things are going to get severely worse for us all. The impacts to Russia though have also been severe, if a little bit less damaging than we originally expected. This new narrative that's being pushed though, especially amongst those who have a vested interest in seeing Russia succeed, is that actually Russia's economy is better than ever. These people are saying that things aren't just okay in Russia, they're actually great, and that the sanctions have actually helped Russia to thrive. This is, of course though, utterly false, and over the last month or so, things have actually continued to deteriorate to a very dangerous level. Russia's economy is on the brink of collapse, you just don't know it yet. Now there are loads of problems with Russia's economy right now and to cover them all would literally take hours. So what we're going to focus on today is Russia's serious problems surrounding the oil and gas markets that you actually probably aren't aware of. First though, we do have to talk about the good news that Russia has had surrounding this industry because it's very obvious and that is mostly what people have been paying attention to over the last year or so. And many of you were probably about to leave a slightly angry comment regarding that. So right off the bat, yes, natural gas prices and oil prices spiked when Russia invaded Ukraine and every time the conflict has escalated, they've spiked again. This has led natural gas prices to rise by about 400% across Europe and oil prices almost doubled at some points as well. Russia is of course a massive exporter of both of these natural resources and so they've been making much more money in selling those resources. This on the surface is a very good thing, but it is a surface level analysis that might offhand suggest that Russia is better off by 100 to 200 billion US dollars this year. In reality, it just doesn't work like that and Russia's energy markets are actually in dire straits. Now this channel is all about briefly explaining various events in the financial world in a short 15 minute video so you can easily digest what's going on. But this video sponsor Blinkist takes that idea to a whole other level. Their app allows you to understand the most important aspects of over 5,500 non-fiction books and podcasts in just 15 minutes of easy entertaining listening. Over just this morning alone, I've reminded myself of the principles behind Milton Friedman's Capitalism and Freedom, which which was instrumental in driving my passion into investing when I was growing up and it took me less than 20 minutes. I've also found out about new inspiring pieces that I'm sure are going to prove immensely useful as I continue to learn as well, like Michael Bailey's Stop, Think, Invest. They offer you added value in your everyday life by helping you discover new perspectives and broaden your horizons. Their new feature, Blinkist Connect, also allows you to share your plan with a friend or loved one and essentially gives you a two for the price of one deal. And of course, to make this incredible service even better, Stoic Finance viewers can get a seven day free trial and 25% off an annual premium membership by clicking the link down below in the description. Again, that's the link down below in the description for a seven day free trial and 25% off an annual premium membership. Russia is for the moment still selling all of the oil that they are producing, but all is not so well. Oil prices are higher than they used to be, but Russia can't actively sell to Europe because of these sanctions. Plain and simple, we put laws into place stopping us from buying Russian oil, so Russia has had to sell it to someone else. And who are they selling it to? Well, mostly Asian countries like China or India. But of course, China and India are their own entities and they know that Russia can't sell to their usual customers, so they are demanding a discount. Right now, that discount amounts to about 30% off on all oil sales. Now, oil sells for about $90 a barrel in America right now, so that means it's selling for around about $60 in Russia. Now, that is still profitable, right? And the answer is yes, for now. But Russia's economy and their industry is incredibly poor. Almost all of the oil extraction that's actually done in Russia is done by Western equipment or expertise. The cost to maintain, to fix and produce more oil have all gone up massively because of these sanctions. Russia also just can't fix this problem on their own. They simply don't have the infrastructure to have self-sufficient extraction. They're just not a developed enough country to do this, which is surprising to many, but is sadly true. They will instead probably have to rely on Chinese industry, a country infamous for debt trapping desperate nations. Now China will be more than happy to make Russia a vassal state, but Russia won't be so happy to move into that realm, so they will likely suffer for a long time before finally allowing the Chinese industry to take over and reap away the nation's wealth. 
So what though, Max, I hear you say, as long as the war in Ukraine continues, the supply of oil will have constraints and prices will stay high. So even while Russia is selling at a discount, Russia will make loads of money. Well, actually, that's starting to change as well. Regular viewers of this channel will know that the entire world is on the brink of a recession. And in one year, we will be in a full-blown recession. America, Europe, China, Russia, and of course, many other countries too, will be in economic problems. Why is this important then? Well, because when countries go into a recession, demand for oil crashes, and so prices crash as well. We've seen this many different times throughout history, and we're already starting to see it today. Oil prices a few months ago were sitting at $120 a barrel or so, and now they're sitting at about $90, down 25%. Why is this? Well, because of recession fears mostly coming out of China. Now, China's economy is screwed for loads of different reasons on their own. They are, though, entering a recession. The Communist Party is trying to stop it, but so far they have been entirely unsuccessful. This will massively reduce demand for oil in China and the whole world and will lead to way lower prices across the board. Already, just the possibility or probability of China going into recession has caused worldwide oil prices to fall by about a quarter. When it actually goes into a recession, those prices will crash further. Then when the same thing happens in the US and the rest of the Americas and Europe and other countries too, when recessions start to kick off everywhere, oil prices will crash further and Russia will simply not be able to derive a profit from extracting and selling their oil. Even if they could still make a profit though, there is one other problem surrounding Russia and their oil exports. As I said earlier, currently they are selling mostly to India and China, the stuff that used to go to Europe and the Americas. But China and India don't actively need this oil. They're simply stocking up while they can and building up reserves. This, of course, won't happen forever. They're buying more than they need now so that in the future they can buy less than they need. Russian oil right now is cheap due to this discount they're forced to give, so this is a perfect situation for them. What happens when that future comes, though? Well, India and China stop buying Russian oil. The prices that Russia can charge drops. The discount that they have to give gets larger. This will send the Russian oil industry further into the black, making it entirely unprofitable, and this situation is probably about a year or so away. Now, on the natural gas front, there are again serious problems at play here. Russia has loads of income from natural gas right now, but from Europe, it will have almost none in the future. Surely, though, that's fine. I hear you say again, they can just sell to India and China, right? Well, sadly, again, no. Natural gas is far more difficult to transport than oil because it needs pipelines or pressurized containers or it needs to be turned into liquid and this costs billions to create. It needs consent and strong agreements between separate countries and there are loads of other difficulties as well. As a result of this, it's almost impossible for Russia to increase the amount of natural gas that they can export to other countries. Now, of course, one of the more recent and biggest problems for Russia is that it sort of seemed like they were planning for all of this to eventually end one day and for gas and oil flows to continue into Europe. A lot of the rhetoric that's come out of Russia has been that they actually want to sell gas and oil to the West because they like Germany being at their beck and call and turning off the taps of Nord Stream was always only a temporary measure in their rhetoric. The massive issue here then is that the Nord Stream pipeline didn't just get shut down for a bit, it got blown up as we all now know. Now no one knows 100% sure who is responsible, but it's my bet that it is the US and co, and that they did it to ensure Europe won't go back to cheap Russian gas when they get a chance. Germany is now seriously starting to suffer and they already didn't really want to support Ukraine in the first place. So when winter comes and times get really hard, there were many fears going around that the Germans might abandon their position, give in to Russia's demands and get their gas again. The end of the Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipelines puts that idea to bed. It will take years to repair the damage and make those pipelines operational again, and that's if Russia even bothers at all. The pipelines were very vulnerable once, and they'd be vulnerable again, so the chances are that they will both just be abandoned. This means there are no future revenues for Russia here. It means there is no magical fix for them that they can look to that will fix all their problems. Of course, though, even if all those problems didn't exist, which they do, those who espouse the great Russian mighty energy industry often forget one thing. That industry only really benefits the absolute wealthiest in Russian society. The country is infamously one of the most unequal on the world, with the average wage outside the major population centers being close to about 300 US dollars a month. The country's GDP is propped up by those exports to the tune of 20 or 30% every single year, of which almost 
all the profit goes to the elite and the oligarchs and not those who actually make up the Russian people. Even if everything were okay for the energy industry, everything is categorically not okay for the poor citizens who never see any of that natural gas money, and that is true whether or not you agree with my assessments on the industry itself. At the end of the day, if things were okay, there would be no reason for Putin to murder a number of top oil and gas executives, but every month or so, we get more news of a suspicious death of someone in this industry who likely couldn't fix problems that just kept mounting up. Of course, there are a myriad of other problems going on in Russia, and I will likely cover this all in a separate video in the future, but the energy crisis that they are seeing is just one part of that. One other thing that we do have to mention today regarding Russia's problems, though, is that for the war in Ukraine, there's just no end in sight. It's dragging out far longer than Putin was hoping, and that is a fundamental problem. The simple fact is that Russia can't actively win this war anymore. You will of course hear otherwise from those who want Russia to win, but the reality is that Russia had one chance to win this war and that was in the first few weeks. Ever since then, Ukraine's chances of holding the Russians back have been increasing. And this is so blindingly obvious when you look at the facts or even just look at a map of the conflict over the last year. Russia has failed to make any serious headway in about half a year, while Ukraine has started to lead some successful counter-offensives and actually liberate some of their territory. Russia has now resorted to conscription, to grabbing random men off the street and throwing them into battle in a desperate attempt to fill their faltering lines. Contrary to what the East has told us for decades, there is no substitute for technology though, and the West is adamant that it will provide Ukraine with the technology that it needs to stop Russia from winning, as it has done up to this point. Now, if you actually listen to what I just said there, I didn't say that Ukraine was going to win this war either, and that was done on purpose. The truth is that this war is going to continue for months or even years, and that means that the sanctions which are crippling Russia's economy are going to continue as well. That means no more imports of technology to Russia and airliners which will start to drop out of the sky. That means that the problems the oil and gas industries are seeing are going to continue until they reach breaking points. That means that the smartest, most hardworking and most entrepreneurial Russians are going to keep fleeing the countries and stay away. It means that these problems are here to stay and it means they're only going to get worse. Now, before you run on down and leave all your angry comments, I am well aware that there are other problems all over the world, and I've covered them extensively on this channel in my videos in the past. Europe is a perfect example of this, I know, and the funny thing about Europe's problems is that they mostly exist because of the sanctions they've put on Russia. Europe is insanely dependent on Russian energy, and in particular natural gas, and gas prices have soared. Businesses all across Germany were surely going to go bankrupt before the government stepped in and basically capped the price of gas, but now the fear isn't that gas will be so expensive businesses will go bankrupt, it's that gas might simply run out. People will go cold and hungry and businesses will fail to operate as energy rationing will have to take place. To say this will be disastrous all across Europe's economies is an understatement, but this doesn't mean that Russia is doing well just because Europe is also in a very poor position. With the US again, we have a similar situation where gross money printing and quantitative easing have caused the mother of all bubbles, and as inflation has picked up, the bubble has finally started to pop. This everything bubble is crashing and it's bringing down asset prices in every single sector, housing, bonds, equities, and even some alternative assets as well. This will compound and we will see another mega recession across the US, one that will likely rival the Great Recession of 2008. Unemployment will run high, people will have their cars and homes repossessed, and businesses will go bankrupt. But again, this doesn't mean that everything is perfect in Russia. The truth is that things are also in incredibly poor shape over there. China is of course no stranger to this turmoil either, with the greatest housing market crash the world has ever seen poised to really take hold and practically destroy the country altogether. A bubble bigger than we've ever seen over here, and a collapse quicker than we've ever seen too. And then of course there's the problems surrounding continued lockdowns, the Communist Party's crackdowns on successful companies, and population collapse as the country is rapidly aging and unable to care for its elderly. This country, once again, is in an awful state of collapse, but that doesn't mean that things are all fine and dandy in Russia. Still though, despite this reality that America, China, Europe, the UK, and everywhere else in the world is seriously struggling, asset prices are crashing, some people think that Russia is actually thriving. I'm afraid to say that it seriously is not. It's seeing massive problems just like everywhere else. Yes, the problems are different. Gas prices in Russia are cheap as all hell. There was even a Russian streamer online who just videoed his gas stove running and burning all day every day for something ridiculously cheap like $3 a month. 
Obviously, I'm not claiming that the energy crisis in Europe is identical to that of the one in Russia. It isn't, but there are some ridiculous and crazy problems that are destroying Russia's economy as we speak. There is a serious problem with capital flight and brain drain in the country. Hundreds of thousands of young men have left Russia over recent weeks to escape mobilization, and these are the educated in Russia, the high-skilled people, the risk-takers, and the entrepreneurs. They are not easily replaced, and they are essential for a functioning, strong economy. Russia has practically no domestic tech industry at all and is entirely built off of natural resources. That's nice when natural resources are expensive, but it causes problems when the rest of the world turns their back on you, as has happened over the last year. Russian airliners are now some of the most dangerous in the world with parts breaking and just not being replaced because the parts come from the West and Russia isn't allowed to import them. Again, there's just no way around this problem. Russia simply doesn't have the expertise or resources needed to build decent electronics. And as of right now, China is still exporting to Russia, but China is also facing very serious problems and relations between the two countries are getting very strained. I've always said that they are not allies, they aren't even friends, they merely have the same enemies, and that's been shown over the last year. China doesn't want this war in Ukraine, they want to make money selling goods to America and the West, and that position is put at risk by this war. To those who still deny the fact that Russia is hurting, I have to ask you just one thing. Why is Russia hiding all of this data from the world? If things are going well, why wouldn't they boast to the world as they do about everything else? Why are they trying to silently hide the data that should prove everything is okay? I'm afraid the answer to that question is a very obvious one. It's because the data would prove them wrong, not right. Thank you all for watching today. Please make sure to follow the other platforms down below in the description that I'm on. And until next time, stay stoic.